welcome to Quarantine Classics on a Saturday night. The boys are here. It's me, Joe. It's Nick. It's George. It's Steve. And we're coming at you on a Saturday night. Oh, wow. Right into it. <laughs> nice. Proud of you. What did you think about that energy and enthusiasm? It's great. Yeah, yeah, really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, coasting off of that, I want to start off with a Father's Day video. I just thought of this one last night because I thought um, we played almost every video. I mean, I've been mining videos that weren't even funny for Father's Day. Uh, I think, you know, there's, there's uh, one with Jason Alexander in it about being a new dad. Uh -huh. But I just thought that one of the most iconic dads from the videos we have is the dad from Party Mania, the VCR game for teenage girls, where oh yeah, you're about to, you're playing a board game, and then uh, there's a timer that counts down, and then the mom, the dad, the annoying brother, the two nerds pop up and give you chores and things. And the dad only has two scenes, but he makes such an impact that I thought it was time and on our Father's Day to uh, celebrate the dad from Party Mania. So these are all- the Coming at you. Coming at you. All the scenes of the dad from Party Mania. Hi, Pumpkin. <laughs> Nobody left, dear. I'm just talking to our daughter here. Oh, hey, that reminds me. While your mother's out, Pumpkin, I'm going to be cutting the grass. So I need you to look after little Billy for me. Now make sure the little guy doesn't get into any trouble, OK? <sighs> make sure your dad doesn't get into any trouble either. Hey, Pumpkin, I need you to do me a favor. Go over to the Goldman's and tell Herb I need to borrow his crescent wrench. And get me one of Mom's hairpins from upstairs. Oh, and if you could grab me a roll of paper towels from the kitchen, I'd really appreciate it. You're the best, Pumpkin. And pick up three more chore cards while you're at it. Now, where does this gear shaft go? There's Dad's entire scenes from Party Mania. I like that he had two scenes and four pumpkins. Yeah, he said he a is, lot of pumpkins. He said this, pumpkins a lot. This is classic... Um, Makeup person doesn't know how to put a subtle amount of uh, grease on a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, that's... He has a word that he says too. That hairpins from upstairs. There's a word that really I like the way he says. Hey, Pumpkin, I need you to do me a favor. Go over to the Goldman's and tell Herb I need to borrow his crescent wrench. And get me one of Mom's hairpins from upstairs. <laughs> I just like the way he says crescent wrench. <laughs> he kind of has a raspier voice than you'd think of for that white bread dad. Yeah, I like that the neighbor's name is Herb, too. Herb <laughs> Goldman, Classic. there should be a spinoff. Uh, you do get to see Herb Goldman's uh, wife. She oh, makes, yeah? She What's makes, her name, Bet Betty Goldman? Uh, probably. She makes bad um, jello molds. Okay. So it's every cliche. Yep. So happy Father's Day to uh, our fathers, but especially the father from Party Mania. That's the main father. All right, let's, let's buckle up. It's time for Plunkett Town, USA, coming at you live on a Saturday night. Two for Tuesday. Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett had never known failure until now. Yes. You know what I just Plunkett noticed? Plunkett time. What I just noticed for the Oops. first time is that the um, the Plunkets are actually tackling the players, and yeah, I oh, you didn't never notice noticed that, that before. No, yeah. Did, did you guys notice that? No, I never. I never noticed that. The Plunkets are tackling Plunkett in each one. That's Plunkett getting tackled in each one. Right. Yeah. Jim Plunkett. Wow. Um, these are all unflattering photos of us and ones that you send in. So we got uh, just a big day here. We got lots of all-star Plunkets today. We got a guest coming in. We got uh, championship round of uh, the uh, tournament. The, the yeah, NCAA we... basketball tournament's canceled. We've been having the uh, VHS song and commercial jingle tournament, tournament sorry. Yep. And yeah, that's the final four tonight. Yeah, so all right, but let's kick things off with Plunkets here. Let's uh, take a look at where, where we are right now with the top three. Top three Plunkets coming at you. <laughs> All right, I'm annoying myself now at this point. <laughs> All right, top three plug-ins. Here we go. Uh, okay, at number three, photo of me uh, wearing a uh, shithead hat. Uh, ironically, and falling asleep unironically. The next up was Emily. Yep, it was usurped. A, it was usurped. She usurped number three uh, with her gingerbread house and huge sweatshirt. She got usurped then by Drucker's backwards hand. Then <laughs> usurption happened by the grub child, McKenna. Yes. And then uh, Star Wars Kid uh, usurped there, and then Grub Child 2 Jr., this time it's personal, uh, usurped that one. Then that got usurped by Kermit Kid, 
which uh, what's his name? Josh, maybe. Yep, I think okay. that's Josh Jones. Mimicking the face of Kermit, and then uh, Sally's fifth grade boyfriend uh, <laughs> usurped <laughs> Josh, and now we got another usurpation, major usurpation here. This is a great one. I think these uh, might be the three that just end up in the in there because that's just solid. This uh, small wonder, yeah, I, I forgot her name, but uh, her small wonder picture, how, yeah. how close she is to small wonder. That's our new number three. Uh, coming at uh, 2.5 used to be this one sent in by Andrew, I believe. It's because his dad has great shorts. There's just a lot going on here. It's just a plunkety photo in general. Uh, the dad uh, has a fanny pack and he has a Elmer Fudd shirt that says Wambo. And it's Elmer Fudd dressed up as Rambo. Uh, that got usurped by centaur man you can't tell us a centaur that got usurped this week i didn't think this one would get usurped but it did uh by george george, wow. george making the top three for the first time this coming this at you <laughs> on the board it happened board. to a nicer guy yep uh <laughs> uh number two uh previously was this one Oh, Getty has licensed this now. <laughs> oh, I sold it to him. Yeah, I sold it to him wow. last week. Got a pretty penny, too. Got a pretty <laughs> yeah. penny. So they have uh, they told me they've had a lot of success with it. Uh, Red Robin yeah. bought it you, for their website. They're going to put it on the front page of their website. Like, you, didn't even, you couldn't even afford to license it, so you put the watermark. You just I, got the watermark. Well, right. otherwise people leak it. and you know That's like, the problem. So. Yeah. Uh, number two got usurped by Nick Stevens, uh, Saddam Hussein dad, and brother mid sneeze, and mom in the bathroom uh, in a bra. Uh, and then holding strong at number one, <laughs> king of all plunkets, Steve Lawrence. There we are. Whew, I'm out of breath. Yeah, well, take a breather. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's start with Steve this week. Um, well, wait a second. Do you want us to do, play uh, Which Thumb is Steve before we get into this? Or do you oh, want to play it last? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Sure, go Whew. ahead. All right, I'm exhausted, but I'll do it. Um, I didn't think you had it in you. No, I got to. This is my job. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, buckle up, everybody, because it's time for everybody's favorite game, which is called. Which thumb is Steve? All right. Now, which thumb is Steve? This is a this is a very fun game that I invented, where I'm going to show you pictures of thumbs. This time, I'm going to show you four different thumbs, and because we got a lot of submissions this week, I'm going to show you four different thumbs, and you have to tell me which of those thumbs is Steve. Only one of those thumbs is Steve. Hmm. Okay. You guys got understand it. how to play the game? Got the rules. Okay, and Nick, I believe you are one in four so far? No, I'm 0 oh and four. You haven't gotten one right? I haven't gotten one right. Oh, Jesus. Uh, George, I think you've gotten a couple right, haven't you? At least one. Okay, least and one. then Steve, I think you're at the top of the leaderboard, of course, because you are Steve. So, yeah, you got three wins. So this, this one's a little bit more challenging this week. Uh, which thumb is Steve? Here's their first thumb. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. Carl Strauss hat, lanyard. Okay. You got it? All right. Here's your second thumb. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also wearing a Carl Strauss hat. And also has a lanyard. lanyard. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Okay. We have a... Can you tell if the one on the left oh. is... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait, we have more. Here's, a, here's your third one. Whoa. Here's another one. Right down there. You can see it. I think that's a Carl Strauss hat, although I can't tell. Yeah, it's tough to tell. Here. It yeah, does look like it. Definitely wearing a lanyard. And then your fourth one here. Is this one hmm. so we got <laughs> yeah four thumbs and only one of them is steve nick which one is steve ah uh, i'm going top left lanyard carl strauss hat rosy cheeks that's steve <laughs> george which which thumb is steve bottom left bottom left yeah okay with mustache yeah now, i've never known steve had a mustache but i think you might be right in, in this one um, I have I have rocked the mustache before, but oh, I'm not have? gonna go with that. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna stick with Nick. Top left. That looks top left. Okay. Really? It's like looking in a mirror. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go with top right, and it's I'm I'm right. Top right. Uh, that's damn it. That was a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are four to choose from. So. Yeah. No, that one was tough. Now, can you guys indulge me just for a second? I uh, want to try out a new game. <laughs> just for a second. <laughs> sure, you've had the floor, but you can do something <laughs> about it. Yeah. Um, I tried out a new game called No Thummies. And it's like no whammies, but you're saying no thummies, no thummies, stop. But you do want the thumb of Steve. You don't want the other thumbs. 
Okay, does that make sense? So I'll give you each a shot and I'm gonna show you images and then you just say, just pretend like you're hitting a button. Okay. And you say, no thummies, no thummies, stop. And if you stop on thumb Steve, then you win something. I haven't worked out all the if rules. If you stop but... at a thummy, it's like a thumb dressed as Tina Turner taking away all your money, right? Yeah, yep. Okay. All right, so here's, uh, Nick, why don't you uh, be the first contestant sure. on uh, no thummies? All right, ready? You got it, Peter. Ah, no thummies. Oh, wah, wah. Uh, wait, that's not yeah. Steve. No, that's not that thumb is not Steve. Right. <laughs> so, right. so far, this is a pretty fun game. Yeah, uh, George, George, uh, no thummies, and let it let it ride out for a little while. Okay. We got, we got, no thummies. No yeah, thummies. Just, just had to do more chance. No thummies. No thummies. No we Stop. <laughs> He's saying it's Steve. Yeah. Nope, nope. It's not Steve. All right. I gotta, I gotta get a better grip on the rules here. But uh, Steve, uh, no thummies. Your turn to go. Let this one ride out. Let's, let's hear you. Let's hear some banter here. All right. Big thumbs. Big thumbs. <laughs> I'm trying to study the patterns so that I can figure <laughs> out when, when to hit it. You're like that guy who figured it out. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> All right. Do you have any advice for me, Nick? <laughs> you gotta... uh, there was my favorite contestant on Press Your Luck. Was the guy went, Big Steve. Nah. Here you go. Oh, whoa. <laughs> this yeah. game's rigged. You can't yeah. No, I got I to gotta work it out better so that there's more winners. <laughs> yeah. See, that there, you would win if you fell on that. So. Okay. Yeah. They're working out the kinks, you know, that was the trial run. You have like a 500 and a spin and a trip to Puerto Vallarta in there. It's kind of... Spice it up a little bit. Hey, um, yeah. if I could have the floor for just a second here. Yeah, I suppose. Um, there's a so Reese, who's a viewer from um, Australia, sent a, a clip that you know he collects VHS tapes. He's been archiving a lot, and he shared this one with me a few weeks ago. I'm just getting to show it now. Jim Plunkett, Sunday at six on People Are Talking. <laughs> <laughs> we now return to Mel Brooks and Madeline Kahn in High Anxiety. <laughs> So during a commercial break for high anxiety, we had this. I'll play it again. Jim Plunkett. Sunday at 6 on People Are Talking. <laughs> People Are Talking. We not That's it. People oh, it were talking about Jim, Jim Plunkett. Plunkett. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I could see that working its way into the intro at some point. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Well, oh, all right. Steve, you, uh, you are the namesake uh, for this segment, so why don't you start us off? All right. I got uh, three coming at you. I like the way you put that. Yeah. So here's the first one. Um, my uh, friend's cat was uh, waking me up, and I decided to take a picture. It likes to wake me up by doing that. Ended up with a great, great plunket, I think. It's just yeah. not, very, not very flattering at all. Okay. Can you, can you guys zoom in a little bit? I just want to see, like, what's going on with your eyes? Are you hung over here? Or are you? Uh... Uh, you got me a good chance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. good. You okay. see those, like yeah, those, look at those bags there. Yeah, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Are you a cat man? Uh, I like cats and dogs. I like animals in general, but, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, He's a cat man. Yeah. Dee -da 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 -da. All on, right. I'm trouble getting right, to the next one. Hold Zoom on all the second. way out, and then uh, I should let you do it. There we go. So this was, this one I was <laughs> drunk. That might have been the, the night before that last photo. <laughs> I'm on the... Um, the subway in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, riding along with me was Bane, one of the characters. Wow. On yeah, and I got to a conversation, and he let me take this photo for free because we got into such a good conversation. <laughs> what were you guys talking about? I, I wish I could remember. Uh, I, uh, it's all a little bit. But are you wearing hospital scrubs? Or? Yeah. yeah, but no. Believe it or not, that is a, a sports jacket with a blue shirt underneath. But the reason why I just think the way the, the light is highlighting yeah. the, my lack of hair up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, you know, I'm, on, yeah, yeah. I'm it thinning like up a, right here and here, boy. A Christmas Carol. You have a sort of. <laughs> yeah, oh. Bane. What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one I have is this one. It's just more the four loco. Um, I don't really think that was taken ironically, but mm. uh, how how are you here to like? How why are you still alive? I feel like you question. shouldn't be alive. Like, I really shouldn't. I after really drinking shouldn't. that Four loco alone, you should be dead. Yeah. <laughs> I had never tried a Four loco, so someone got it and gave it to me, and they were, they wanted to memorialize it with here. So, you know, yeah. 
And I, I think generally know, they say you should drink malt beverages in cars too, right? <laughs> <laughs> open containers, that's all fine. Hey, he has a seatbelt on. He's fine. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. yeah. So those were my plunkets for this week. Not bad, George. Always good. Well, I, I don't really, I'm, I'm out of plunkets, so I, I thought I'd show some pictures from um, a fake vacation. Okay, great. So here's me at uh, in Antarctica. Okay. Uh, this is me. I climbed a, um, uh, let's see, a tower in Russia and took this picture. Ooh, you're one of those daredevil guys. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good, uh, that's good Photoshop right there. Oh, well, hey, this is me in the, going into the Marianas Trench. I, w- I went lower than anyone has ever gone. Wow, uh, embarrassing. Both morally and... Uh, and this is me doing parkour on Easter Island. And the last one was running of the bulls. And of course, I'm taking a selfie. Oh, yeah, you got your you got... Houston Rockets shirt on, too. I've always yeah. known you to be a huge Houston Rockets fan. Wow, you know, that, was, that was your, Plunkett va- your fake Plunkett vacation. I was sick of people taking lots of photos on vacations. Yeah. So I did. Your Plunkation. Yes. Joe, yeah. what do you have? Um, all right. I got uh, a couple of me. I think I'm running out, too. Uh, but I'm mostly going to focus on Nick. Um, once uh once you get me out of the way here's me i i, I picked this one because I, I look kind of thummy here i'm pretty yeah. thummy that wow. is, that's that's yeah that's real thummy that's mm-hmm. pretty thummy the hat does not do me any justice yeah and it's, the mustache is just not just i'm not committing to it meaty face yeah. yeah it's your head is like bigger than your body yeah that's it's like, puffy it's extremely yeah. puffy yeah yeah you're downplaying it but that's an incredible <laughs> plunket right there. yeah what are your better ones? <laughs> okay, uh, it's making me feel better about my photos. Now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this this could be in the ranking right there. No, Don't this sleep is, on it. Uh, it gets worse the more you look at it. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, <laughs> his legs. Right, moving, on. Uh, moving on. Now this is an ironic <laughs> plunket, but this I took with JC when JC was big on bodybuilding, and we just kind of had very different body shapes at the time, so we we took a photo of that. Um, and uh, here's another one. So I was at a at a Brewer game. I was out having a smoke, and it was really hot. And I took my shirt off to be funny. I don't know where the glasses came from. I have no idea where the glasses came from. But this woman, I don't know who she is. She came up. She's like, "Can I get a picture with you?" <laughs> and I, this is like, you know, this isn't like she recognized me from found footage or anything. This is just. And then I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." And then, you know, uh, this is I 1979 had... Summerfest. Is that what this was? <laughs> You're going to see rat. 2004, okay. uh, and then uh, I'm wearing my squid billy shirt right there. I got my squid oh, yeah. billy on. Yep. <laughs> That's hair in the shape of a squid billy. And then she goes, then she, um, maybe because I was t- I was nice and very accommodating, and she, she's like, would it be okay if I got my friends too? So she brought her friends over, and I don't think they were, I think they were laughing at me. Oh, yeah. With me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they, they all took a picture with me, and they all thought it was funny. <laughs> Um, oh, here's now we're now we're focusing on Nick. Nick, do you remember this time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's not so much a plunket picture as it is just the, the memory of of this. So we uh, were shooting a documentary, Dirty Country, and we we're interviewing that woman there, and she had written a book on like dirty limericks or something. So we wanted to talk to her about that. But then afterwards, a very nice couple. They let it, they invited us to stay for steaks afterwards, and uh, I was like, yes, absolutely. Let fry him up. So he grilled out steaks yeah. for us. <laughs> and Nick, I don't think that you wanted to volunteer that you were vegan. I, no, I, I didn't want to get in that discussion. I wanted to just go. When they invited us to dinner, I was like, well, we have a lot to do. Because we did. We were in post-production on this documentary. They was like, sure, steaks, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, Nick said that uh, he had a late, a late lunch, so they brought him a, a bowl of applesauce. So yep. Nick had a bowl of applesauce while we all had steaks. And like... <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah and i knew why you were taking the picture too because you wanted to commemorate my uncomfortable i think i was in tears the entire time yeah and he was oh yeah like, hey, were... i got a wine. i was like he's like i have a wine from 1982 if you'd like to. I was like yes please pour me a pour me a... oh my god you got an edit due on monday but yeah okay then they made us watch the dvd extras for stevie ray vaughn no eric clapton eric clapton dvd <laughs> Like, well, we gotta go. You were loving every second of it. This is this is a this is like one of my favorite photos of Nick of all time. Just I think one you've shown man this before. Oh no, one man helping another man with a bike helmet. Was this, this in is, Amsterdam? No, no, this is in uh, Long Island City. Oh, and okay. I saw this happening. I think I had an older phone, low resolution, but I was like, I'm taking a picture of this. This is a good one. So um, I'm gonna print that out and and tape it up on my wall because I love it. Be a good um, sheet cake. 
Yeah, it would. Yeah. Okay. So you remember last week, Nick, you said this wasn't you. Right? Yes. Okay. I, I sent it to your sister and she goes, it could be him. So through some discussion, I decided to go back to the original role of IMGs that mm-hmm. was on. And next to it, taken 30 seconds prior to this photo, was this photo. Do you think that is you? Hmm. It's hard to tell. I don't what know. What do you guys think? Definitely. I would say, say, I yes. would say yeah, that probably is, yeah. I don't know why I'm taking such a close-up picture of you. I think it's because your eye is red or something. Yeah, I think I was had bloodshot eyes from staying up all night or something. Yeah. So, but then 30 seconds before this was taken was, that's the edit that we had to go to. Oh. So it was you. So that's why we were up late staring at screens. Interesting. Wow, yeah, that really exactly. doesn't, I didn't think that looked like me, but I stand That's you. That, that's you. My nose looks huge. Yeah. It's, a, it's an unflattering photo. It's really <laughs> bad. That I'm might gonna, be worse than Red Robin. That's what I was going to ask. Do you think this is worse than your Red I Robin? I do, 100%. Really? <laughs> well, no, because you can claim it's not you, but pores Red Robin, in, you can't claim it's not nose. you. in the nose. I mean, you can just see every fault and wrinkle. And, and look at the bags under my eyes there, too. And we're 100% sure it wasn't the editor? Because he looked like he could have been. He was wearing glasses. So We could have taken him off. I don't think that's magic. We didn't have that relationship with him. <laughs> okay, but that's what I'm asking. <laughs> uh, Nick, I would like to ask you though about your eyebrows, and I I know all the Melinda's are wondering too. Do the curtains match the drapes? Huh? Do the curtains match the drapes? We're all wondering. The curtains match the drapes, so those are both window coverings. Yep. <laughs> um. Yes. Yeah. The, the curtains do match the drapes. Yes. The yep. pubes match the eyebrows. Oh well, I think you mean carpet. Uh, that's what. I, don't, I, th- I think the way I said it was the right way. Oh, okay. Um, yep, exactly. I have a uh, white, almost translucent pubic hair. Do you? Ask an answer. Do you? Do you know how body hair works? No, I guess you don't. Um, <laughs> my curtains match my drapes. Uh, your eyebrows do? Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, if you have blonde, if you have blonde hair, your body hair is darker. Your, your, um, chest hair, your leg hair is darker. Uh, it sounds like an EP mode. So, George, do your... It's curtains match the carpet? I, I don't know. I dye does mine, carpet, so I don't know. Does the carpet match the drapes? Yeah. Yes, George, that's does the it. carpet that's, match the that's drapes? That's the saying that the guy who was at the Brewers game would say to those ladies taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve is on the line, so we got to get moving here. Steve, do your, do your curtains match the drapes? I, electrolysis. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, All right. Yes, yeah, so we got to move. Okay, so uh, here's a couple of my plunkets. These were, this is proof that even before I gained weight, uh, there was something a little off. So this is uh, just kind of like crazy eyes right here. Mm-hmm. This is like trying to use telekinesis to burn a hole in something. Yeah, you have a lot earring of you have there. That. It, yeah, that does look like an earring. It's just a blemish from the photo. You do have a lot of those pictures with the, that like death stare. And this is from my sort of egg shaped uh, haircut style. And that was second grade, fourth grade. I like my posture here. Just kind yeah, of a little slouchy. A rumpled alligator shirt and mm-hmm. um, open mouth. Open mouth, yeah. Yep. Just, and then I don't know what this one is. Oh, uh, so next week uh, I'm going to my <laughs> parents have a cabin that they rent up in Wapaka, Wisconsin, every for a week every month since I was this age, uh, for a week every summer. And I'm going there next week. So as a result, uh, next week there won't be a quarantine class. I think we're going to take a two-week hiatus, we're right? We're going to take two weeks off. Yeah, we need a breather, especially after this episode. So there will still be a VCR party, but no quarantine classics for the next two weeks. We're taking a little summer vacation. You and your dad, are you and your dad, are they? Are you guys wearing the same yes. shirt? And this was going to attempt to be a Christmas photo, I think. But then you just have my dad's hairy legs. And then my sister's. And mom shirts don't match at all, but my dad and mine do. I think we got those at Shopco or something, those shirts. And, and uh, that, that, that death look again. Yeah, I mean, and just like in all these photos, like the whole family looks great, and then there's me. I look like I was kept up in the attic and just thrown meat every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> and it looks, looks like there's a testicle about to slip out of that those shorts, too. <laughs> I mean, they're just way you too... You didn't have testicles at that point, did you? No, that's right. That's right. You okay. don't grow them until you're uh, in your 20s. They drop. They drop. Testicles drop. Yeah, but I mean, all right. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Good move. I like the the meter, like the 
whatever the electric meter that's right behind your head. Oh yeah, that's great a nice framing. That's a, yeah, yeah, great framing for our Christmas photos that year. But uh, not to be stopped, the Melindas have come out, I, and it, they're kind of slowing a little bit. But you showed a small wonder plunket, and I think that inspired Jamie, who, by the way, is the name of uh, Small Wonder's brother was Jamie. But here's another uh, Small Wonder inspired, inspired like maid outfit for a child. I don't know if that was the style at the time or what. What? What? And wearing Kanda tights, it looks like. That is just ridiculous. This is also wearing Jamie, and her shirt says, help, I've been bad, call 1-800-GRAMMA. <laughs> That's what her shirt says. I wonder what the mom's shirt says. Oh, yeah. Pump hmm. it up or something? like. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, some sort of like generic slogan. Right. That looks like yeah. some kind of baby shower. This is Jessica, I think. <sighs> yeah, Jamie. Maybe. Oh, same one? This might be Jamie, too. I think I okay. wrote this. But this is Jamie, and just was wearing denim that was three sizes too big. Also, the the little brother down on the bottom, is he holding up, like, a packet of, like, Instant mashed gravy? potatoes. I think, Instant or, gravy. yeah, oh, maybe yeah. it's gravy. Yeah. Powdered gravy that... <laughs> yeah. So, not great. So, this is a legendary family plunket. Um, this is Christina, and you could just see. Yeah. The dad's posture is weird, and then here's a little close-up. That's, a uh, uh, the same photo session, um, and and then the TV it says Thunder Pictures MTV Networks 1991, and so I forget I think Jeremy sent this in. This is his wife, and he just typed in Thunderworks Pictures MTV Networks, and this is what came up in the Google search. Plunkett's Entertainment. Yes. Really? What? First thing that came up. So oh my God. I told them we're through the looking glass on this one. This is this yeah. episode is haunted. Yeah. So it's something somebody up there is watching. Well, I'll go back to the picture just for a second. Does it look the one before? Uh, does it look like there's a guy with a mirror face that's, that's standing Slender behind Man. him? That's Slender Man. Slender Man is in that <laughs> no, picture. It is yeah. haunted. <laughs> yeah, All you're right. He's a man with a with a mirror face. Yes. Um, oh, this sure. is scary. Okay, this is Sarah winning third place at 4-H, and she said that her haircut looked like a Goomba mushroom guy from <laughs> Super Mario. Emo <laughs> Phillips. She said Goomba. Yeah, this is Emo Phillips uh -huh. winning third place. This is Sarah said she was drinking from a Lion King promotional cup from Taco Bell, and uh, just a lot going on. I think anytime you have a box fan or any sort of like, you know, rotating fan, it just really classes up a photo. Yeah, and Isn't like it? all the plugs in the back. <laughs> It's just a great photo all yeah, around. And probably getting some kind of like, I would say, snack food out of her. Uh, I mean, all she needs is like her, her Saddam Hussein dad in the background. I know. I know. It's almost there. This could be Hall of Fame. Yeah. And here's one wearing uh, these pants with rubber galoshes. And she kind of oh, looks yeah. like she's with McKenna. She kind of looks like she's got a grub child. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a double plunk. Are those, looks are those two cats on a barrel? Over there? Yes, they are. Wow. Hi. <laughs> Two cats on a barrel. barrel. Each one seeking <laughs> happiness. All right. Tony oh, said boy. that his eccentric uh, grandmother would have um, mannequins dressed in lace throughout her house. No. He, he said this was 1999. They were vacationing in Florida uh, in a retirement community. The grandma was eccentric. She dread, dressed like Blanche Devereaux and looked like an older canner Liza Minnelli. She chain smoked long, thin brown cigarettes and listened to Yanni music. She wow. kept Christmas themed trees up year round in her home and had several scantily clad mannequins in every room. There's a brunette dressed in a black negligee seated next to the vanity and that he would share and next to the guest room he shared with he and his seven year old brother. And then the blonde one seen in the photo was sprawled across the bed in his parents' room. And on this visit, the grandma insisted that he and the dad pose for photos with the blonde and he said, I was ashamed and embarrassed, but my dad really hammed it up, groping the pointy parts with a grin. And he's still searching for that photo. Because that probably would be oh. a dad blanket. So. Oh, yes. Wow. wow. Is, the is bagel. His, is his uh, grandma Norman Bates? <laughs> she might be. Grandma? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, and then, um, let's see, where is the other one? I mean, oh, they're yeah. knocking it out of the park this week. And finally, yeah. David, oh. this is David. This might be the new number one, because look at what's going on. First Mine, of all, this is, it's a dirty yeah. Polaroid. <laughs> and, and this is taken at his uncle's pizza place, apparently during football season. 
the Bud Budweiser girls are in there. And then, um, yeah, David, you're such a cutie. Y O U R. You're such a cutie. Love and kisses, Janine and Linda. Janine and Linda. <laughs> oh, man, those are such Janine and Linda's. Yes, and my knee jerk is to say this is new number one. We'll have so to let good. it sit in because there's so much going on. He's wearing those so jam shorts. What are his shorts? What does he have on them? Yeah, them? jams. Okay. I don't know. With and whisks then, on them? And then hip hop Looney Tunes. Look at his knees, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 wow. I didn't even notice his knees yeah. until I know. <laughs> kind of looks like Steve's thumb picture a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you got Sylvester, oh. Bugs, and uh, Taz with kind of hip hop cross colors. And then the whole picture. <laughs> which one do you think's Janine? Which is Linda? I think it's in order. I think Janine's on the left. I think Linda's on the right. I would say so too. Just the blonde one seems like more of a Janine to me. But, yeah. <laughs> that was the that was the day he became a man, isn't it? That was officially the day. Well, that's the day I became a man after seeing that too. <laughs> yeah, we all became men today. Yeah, and that's uh, show us your plunkets. If you've got a plunket, send it into info at Found Footage Fest. Yep, and we yes, we will resume two week, three weeks from now, right? Yep, we're taking the next two weeks off. So we should have a nice plenty of time to send of plunkets. us your plunkets. Yes, exactly. yes, send us your plunkets. Um, all right, it's time for the tournament, the time, the moment you've been waiting for. Oh boy, I'm nervous. Are you guys nervous? Yeah. Should we bring on our guest now? Let's bring on Steve. Yep. Okay, and you can explain who this is. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, coming on, we got uh, Steve Hyden. He's a music critic. He's written three books. Uh, all about music. He writes for Up Rocks. He's the music critic. He's written for Rolling Stone, Pitchfork. This guy knows how to critique music. We're in good hands with him. I know we promised a celebrity, uh, and he's not quite celebrity status, but um, all the celebrities said no to us. So, uh, well, they didn't respond, actually. They didn't actually say no. So we got Steve here, and uh, I went to a national show with him one time, and he's a celebrity there. People were... Yeah. Yeah, people were like, are you Steve Hyden, the music critic? And he was like, yeah, and they got the pictures taken with him. So in the, the world of music critics, he's a celebrity. So there, take that. I think that's the way you want to bring somebody on is saying that no other people got back to us. <laughs> <laughs> so here he is. Uh, I am uh, asking him to start video, but he has not responded to that. I mean, a celebrity would have gotten this right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to text him? Yeah. So uh, as you know, for the last uh, four weeks, I believe, we've been uh, making a tournament bracket like the NCAA tournament. We've each taken a division. We started off with 32, no, 30, 16? Yeah, we started off with 16. Oh, there's hey. Steve. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Hey, hey. I, wasn't on, I was waiting for you. I oh, was, I wasn't on here, so. Oh, no problem. We're, we're on live right now. You're in a minivan. Yes. <laughs> uh, thanks for, thanks for thank taking time out to be our music critic to judge the final four in our toe-tapping tournament of VHS songs. Steve, I'll explain to you what this is in a second, but I'm just going to let you know the gravity of what is going on here. I kind of told you in, in text, it was kind of a, I was just like, can you be a judge on this thing? This is a big deal. This isn't like a joke. Okay. <laughs> so... I want you to take this seriously, and I want you to, to think about this. I want you to think about things. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. All right, cool. Lay it on me. Uh, all right, let's, let's get the opening graphic down. All right, I hate it go. so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Toe Tournament, 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 Toe Tournament, Tournament. All right, Steve, so here's <laughs> what we have you doing. So we, for the last four weeks, we've been doing NCAA bracket style. Uh, where we take, we have two different divisions. We have the commercial jingle division and we have the VHS division. And these are the okay. best songs we've ever played on the show going wow. uh, head to head in the Sweet 16. So this is what it looks like. This is the tournament. And so we have all of our winners here. We have Springer Mountain Chicken. We have you and your Johnson. We have Kosher, Kosher, Kosher. And we have Super Duper Cooper. So let's start, let's just start with me. I'm in the commercial division up here. Um, and this is the we're in the final four we're going to start with springer mountain chicken which is a jingle that i don't know where it aired but it has a very it's a very catchy song and uh it's been a fan favorite for a while so okay all right here's your first song steve you know there's something cooking the aroma fills the air your friends and family just can't wait to taste what you prepare. Race to 
a higher standard Grown for quality Chicken raised at Springer Mountain Farms Tastes better naturally Raised to a higher standard Springer Mountain Farms Chicken raised to a higher standard Powerful. Powerful. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of, it kind of gave me, or do you want me to say as we go along what yeah. my thoughts are? Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, okay. But I think maybe we should share the the first two. We'll all go around and we'll say what we think, and then it'll okay. come down to Steve, and Steve will give his thoughts on it. I want. I like. I like hearing his first impressions. Though. Okay. Let's hear. Yeah. Let's hear your first impressions. Well, I was just gonna say it was giving me sort of like a uh, like a early '80s yacht rock vibe, uh, which is a sound that's very nostalgic for me. So I was enjoying that. I was enjoying the fretless bass. There was some sweet <laughs> fretless bass licks in there, which you don't really expect to hear that in a commercial jingle. I, it shows me that there were some real musicians playing on that song. So uh, the musicianship displayed on that track is is jumping out to, out to me right now. It exceeded my expectations. Yeah, Interesting. Okay. Interesting. It's definitely a toe tapper, too. Now, that's going up against uh, one that won in Steve's division, Steve Lawrence's division. Uh, Steve, why don't you, uh, you want to introduce this one? This one's yours. Sure. Um, there, it came out, I think, we're, I'd say this is the dark horse of the, of the final four, um, in my personal opinion. It came through a really, really tough bracket, though. It showed a lot of fight throughout it. <laughs> it is uh, you and your Johnson. Yeah, and... Uh, we, we thought maybe this was a joke, but we don't think it's a joke. We think that this, they were being serious when they made it. For Johnson Brand Motors. You've got your sunrise. You caught a prize. You, you're making your Johnson. Party nights, summer whites. You, your friends, and your Johnson. Rooster mm -hmm. tails, water trails. You, your kids, and your Johnson. Saturday nights, distant lights. You, your girl, and your Johnson. You and your Johnson, a way of life for over 50 years. It's a real commercial, Steve. Like, uh, we thought it was like a Saturday Night Live sketch or something. It's a real commercial. I was going to say, it reminded me of like a Ween song. It sounded like something that'd be on like White Pepper or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it had that vibe to it. I mean, obviously. Okay, so like you, well, you want me to give impressions or show? No, 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 no. You guys say? We'll go, we'll go around first, and we'll we'll okay. say what we think, and then you get to make the ultimate decision. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and say I'm Springer Mountain Chicken all the way, and it's ma mainly a question of integrity for this tournament because if you, your friends, you, you, your girl, and your Johnson wins this, people are gonna think that's the only reason it won is because the Johnson word, and I want integrity in this, and Springer Mountain Chicken. I wake up with that song in my head daily. It, that's a testament to what kind of toe tapper this is. I'm going with Springer Mountain Chicken. Nick? I am too, uh, and I'm not taking this lightly. I love the gentle, relaxed summer vibe of Do Your Friends and Your Johnson. It's got a kind of a cool 70s uh, vibe to it. But I got to go Springer Mountain Chicken because I think it's more inspirational. I think that's what we need in these times. So it's kind of got the sha-la, sha-la-la. It's kind of got those, yeah. you know, soulful singers coming in at the end it's it yeah brings you up and yeah i don't think uh people should eat chicken but i i think that's the best thing <laughs> that was gonna be my question to you nick is that you are a vegan and yeah. uh did you did you have a problem with the uh the it, it, it entered into my decision but i feel like i had to go with the better jingle excellent george i'm going to go with uh you and your johnson because i like the way the vocal line changes with each uh each iteration, it, it, it uh, becomes more complex. It sits with you. Like what? Give me an example. Like what? You've got your sunrise. <laughs> you caught a prize. <laughs> you, your friends, and your Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then next time it's you, your girl, and your Johnson. Yeah, it doesn't know. stay. It doesn't stay uh, static. You have a pretty voice. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, cool. So, uh, Steve. I mean, um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you my impressions first. Um, I think uh, I'm going to go with you, your, uh, you and your Johnson as well. I think I was going to go that way before I heard George articulate so well. Um, but I do think if you can get past the fact of the ha ha joke, it really is a good song and it's going to stay with you. All right, Steve, we're split down the middle. I don't envy you at all. 
Break and by the way, us. you get the final decision. So it's not a, you know, even okay. if we split, you would get the final decision. Well, it's funny because I, I decided right away after I heard uh, the second song what my choice was going to be. I, like I said, for the first song, I like the musicality of it, the instrumentation. Again, like the fretless bass. I'm a big fretless bass person. I enjoyed that aspect of it. The second song, obviously, you have, you have the very funny chorus. Um, but as a song, to me, it's not as strong as the chicken song. So I'm going to go with the, the chicken song. Yes. Wow. Yes. All right. Into the, into oh. the championship. Into the dance. Into yes. The dance. OK, hold on. Let me just make it official here. And then we'll move on to the, uh, to the other bracket. All right. I think I know how to do this. All right. So it's Springer Mountain Chicken, SMC, moves on. That's wow. huge. Wow. All right. Go, Weeks of anticipation. Me. All right, now we're moving on to the Nick League in the VHS division with Kosher, Kosher, Kosher. Nick, you want to uh, set this one up here? Yep, you got it. Coming at you. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is a, a song by a, a man named uh, Uncle Moishi. And Uncle Moishi has his backup band called the Mitzvah Men. And this is a song about dietary restrictions. <laughs> Kosher, kosher, kosher. That's yeah, so uh, that's uh, Uncle Moishi and the Mitzvah Men coming at you. All right, that's the first part of uh, that bracket. Steve, any uh, Steve Hyden, any uh, initial thoughts? Um, not crazy about that song. I gotta say, <laughs> wow, oh, boy. It's kind of an it's kind of an annoying song. <laughs> the visual element adds to it because actually seeing him, uh, it, it makes it more enjoyable. But just that song by itself, I actually closed my eyes. <laughs> listening to it just so I wouldn't have the visual element and without the visual element it was not very good yeah. in my opinion very oh, repetitive boy. obviously it, it I mean uh, I was shocked that it that it made that it made it that far into the bracket really I always thought yeah. it'd be a favorite because that's one I wake up with my in terms of tapping your toe I mean that's it's true about as toe tapping as you get I think that song is lucky that it wasn't facing off against the Johnson song mm -hmm. because i think johnson would have wiped the floor with oh uh, i bet oh sure yeah i bet that's that clear. song think, thinks it's lucky stars every single night the, yeah to yeah. me that's the weakest out of the three so far but we'll, I, hmm. we'll, I guess we'll wait for the next it one it would have won the nit tournament that's what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> it got a well, seed. well yeah again you know like in these tournaments it depends on if you get a good matchup you can go really far and right. i think i haven't seen the other brat yeah i haven't seen the other matchups but it seems like that one probably had a good yeah, uh, yeah. Some, some good matchups before now. Like I think you referred to it as the Valparaiso. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of, sort of the That's Butler. Yeah. yeah, it's Butler. It's Butler. Right, right. Butler yeah, it, it's happy to be here in the Final Four. You know, so <laughs> yep. good for them. Well, this doesn't bode well, George. So the you, uh... yeah, the final video is from a a toilet training videotape, and it, the song is called Super Duper Pooper. <laughs> Have you seen this one before, Steve? I don't know. The title sounds familiar, but okay. we'll see. Here we go. She is a super duper pooper. She can party with the best. No more diapers to get in her way. We are very impressed. She is a super duper pooper. She knows when she has to go. Take a bow, she's a big girl now. She's the best pooper we know. Yay! There we go, super duper pooper. Ooh, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. What's Steve, first thoughts? Well, that sounds also annoying. So <laughs> this is definitely the more annoying side. But I don't know if say... you've seen our show, Steve, but that's generally <laughs> the idea. Well, the other two songs I, weren't annoying, actually. I, I thought the other two songs were... Were, were pretty good but um 
I will say as a parent who has had to potty train children, I appreciate the lyrical content of that song. I think it's uh, actually could be instructive for the world, that kind of song, okay. encouraging kids to uh you know use the use the toilet so right that, but but, but, but like before that, don't don't make your don't make your decision yet we have to do our round table we have a we have a routine here so yes uh, yes, uh, yes steve lawrence steve lawrence what the, what are your thoughts first um i you know we talk we call this the toe tapping tournament yep. and as soon as super booper pooper came on i started tapping both uh <laughs> with my toes and my fingers on the desk it's a, oh I it's mean, a finger it, tapper it's it's yeah it's wow. both toe and finger tapper mm-hmm Thumbs too. I did not. Uh, well, I guess it nodded my head. So yeah, I guess I can kind of say a, <laughs> kind of say a thumb. Wow. Um, Nick. Kosher, kosher, kosher. Yeah. I got to do it. It's a song I wake up with the most. It's the one in my head most of the time. So Uncle Moishi and the Mitzvah Men get it for me. George. Kosher, kosher, kosher is catchier, but it's the it's the monotony is is unbearable so i have to go with super duper pooper but i don't totally love either of these songs well it's it's weird because both of these are children's songs ultimately and we didn't it wasn't all children's songs in that bracket i think we had just two valparaisos that that came to the to the end and two valparaisos are playing each other uh, but super duper pooper you look it up in the dictionary there's a picture of super duper pooper in there you look up a picture of hold on i said that wrong you look up a picture of toe tapping tournaments you'll see a picture of uh super duper pooper there that was far more eloquent um and so i'm going to super duper pooper steve um so i was thinking about kosher and if i if i recall i mean i've only heard it once but i think there was like some vague klezmer aspects to that song which is kind of a clever musical thing do you want us to so play it again you, no it's fine <laughs> i think i remember it pretty well so it seems like that maybe had a little bit more musically going on but um Super Duper Pooper, like I said, I think the lyrical content um, is uh, is much better than Kosher, Kosher, Kosher. It's not saying much. It's a low bar, but I think Super Duper Pooper pushes over the top for me because of the lyrics. So I'm going to vote Super Duper Pooper. We got a winner. We got a championship game. We got, look at this. This is very exciting. We got Kosher, <laughs> Kosher, Kosher. Uh, no, Super Duper Pooper. Moving on. All right, SDPC. I knew I knew Super Duper Pooper was going to get to the finals. Yeah. I, knew I, think, I think if you look back at the tapes, I said so, too. The little engine that could. All right, look at this. We got uh, Duke and Kansas. <laughs> Springer, SMC and SDP. Let's watch them one more time. Yeah. Um, well, I'll start with Springer Mountain Chicken one more time, just so that we can all make the right decision here. Um, there yeah. We go. You know there's something cooking, the aroma fills the air. Your friends and family just can't wait to taste what you prepare. Raised to a higher standard, grown for quality. Chicken raised at Springer Mountain Farms tastes better naturally. Raised to a higher standard, Springer Mountain Farms chicken raised to a higher standard. Wow. wow, I could see, I could see getting emotional over that song. Like if you were maybe in an emotional state, and then that came on the TV at that moment, and, and you were hungry for chicken, and you were hungry for chicken, you weren't a vegan. Like I could see like tears welling up. Um, yeah, I, I, and I could see like that band in their next session recording like a Christopher Cross track or something, you know, or like cool. you know. They seem like a real band, like well, real also, musicians. Also, Steve, the, the guy who wrote that, his name is Otis, and he writes thousands of jingles. Like, th like he's just a jingle. Oh. He, like, you probably heard hundreds of his songs just by watching TV at night. He's written wow. so many jingles. Yeah, yeah. You can so tell. You can yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, going up against that in the championship round, we got Super Duper Pooper. Nick? Ooh. Or, wait, who's that? George. Oh, it's George's. George. Here we go. She is a super duper pooper. She can party with the best. No more diapers to get in her way. We are very impressed. She is a super duper pooper. She knows when she has to go. Take a bow, she's a big girl now. She's the best pooper we know. 
Ooh, this is not an easy task. <laughs> this is not no. easy at all. Uh, Nick, why don't you start? Why don't you start the discussion? All right, I've really been thinking about this one. It's not arbitrary. I'm going with super duper pooper, and I'll tell you why. Might not be as inspirational, but in terms of a toe tapper, I think that's the toe tapping the song. I was trying to tap my toe at a Springer Mountain Chick, and I couldn't do it. My toe was like, not gonna happen. I saw you. I saw you. You're yeah. sweating over there. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so that's why Super Duper Pooper, I think, deserves to win the uh, first annual toe tapping tournament for 2020. Steve Lawrence. Uh, I'm going to agree with Nick. Uh, same thing. Uh, you know, um, Spring Mountain, it's a sway song. You know, you, you just sway back. But this is the toe tapping tournament. If you want to tap your toes, you're definitely going with Super Duper Pooper. You know, I was, I was right there with you guys. I was, I was riding the Super Duper Pooper horse all the way home. And, uh, but after today and hearing Springer Mountain Chicken, I'm changed. Like, I think it's the greatest song that was in this entire tournament. It, like, it's not a fluke that it's here. There's a reason it's here. Springer Mountain Chicken. Uh, I have to agree with Nick that, that um, I would never tap my toe to Springer Mountain Chicken. But we, we have to, I just can't believe we've ended up here. We, Totally tulips gone, wet pets is gone. This is just, this is a shocking moment. Jeff's birds was not even homes. in here. Jeff's birds was not well, even I've in here. I've already addressed Jeff's birds, but uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I, we're at. I mean, um, yeah, there's so many that have gone by the wayside now. Um, maybe they'll play in a consolation bracket at some point, or maybe they'll live to fight another day and be in uh, the next tournament. Well, you know, uh, Ross from St. Louis, he put together a one shining moment that will end the entire show with. So we'll get to see all the other. Uh, We'll get to see all the other competitors here. We'll just, look back at, you know, some of the other. That's where people are going to tear up. <laughs> yes, that will actually. Yes, and YouTube's definitely going to flag us for that. But, I'm sure, uh, yeah. So, Steve, we got three for Super Duper Pooper, and we got one for Springer Mountain Chicken. Who's yeah. Another? Well, you know, I'm a little intrigued by this because it seems like the criteria here is taking toe tapping literally. Like you were literally <laughs> tapping your toe to the song, which I feel like usually that's like a figurative thing. It just means yes. like, oh, it's a catchy number. It doesn't mean you're like literally tapping your toe. So I guess I'm a little unclear on the criteria here because for me, the strength of Super Duper Pooper is not the music, it's the lyrics. I feel like the lyrics have genuine social value in teaching children that it's okay to go in the toilet. So that would be my argument for Super Duper Pooper. However, as a piece of music, I don't think there's any question that Springer Mountain Chicken is the superior song here. And even if it's not literally making my toe tap, in the figurative sense, it is giving me enjoyment while listening to it. So it is a figurative toe tap for me, which is enough for me. So I would vote Springer Mountain Chicken. Whoa! Yes, we got a winner! We got a winner! Wow. Yes, Springer Mountain Chicken. Wow, that was an upset. Yeah, that definitely was. Hold on, let me grab the line tool and draw a circle. Oh my god, it. the comments are blowing up right below. Oh boy, there it is. This is sending shock waves. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna put some energy lines out. Holy oh god! Wow, wow energy. So injury. This is a sore winner right here. Oh wow, that is huge. Wow, major. What a day. What wow, a day. the endorsement <laughs> deals coming out of this are going to be amazing. I'll be honest. Like when I when I started when I started that bracket, I thought that uh, Dr. Tammy Bailey Dentistry was gonna was gonna win it. And I, Steve, I'd love for you to hear that. I'll play that for you on a different day because that the writer of that song is also Otis, who wrote the Springer. And I thought, oh, I, shit. I thought skateboard surfing was gonna go all the way. Honestly, <laughs> I really thought skateboard surfing was gonna do it. Um, like, uh, like everything else though, the way the winner, um, gets to, uh, usually have some sort of ceremony. They cut down the net. Um, I've made a VHS basketball net and <laughs> in honor of Springer Mountain Chicken, I'm going to pose for a photo and cut the basketball <laughs> net down. Go grab some chicken out of your refrigerator and put it like behind you. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I have some mock chicken. All right. So uh, here it is. This this goes. One shiny moment. Da, da. One <laughs> shiny moment. Wow. That's so huge. And wow. holding this up for Springer Mountain <clears throat> Chicken and, and Otis well, and everybody involved in that song. 
Steve, thanks so much for your uh, thoughtfulness on this. That was just, I'm so glad we got you for this. And uh, it, was, it was a very thoughtful answer. And I, th I think you, were, you gave the right answer. I think you chose correctly. Well, my pleasure, fellas. And congratulations to Otis and Spring and Mountain Chicken. I mean, I, I want to dig more into Otis's catalog. He sounds like an amazing I think you'd artist. like it. I think you'd like yeah. it. Um, Steve, one more thing before, we, before you go. We do a thing called Show Us Your Plunkets where we show terrible photos of ourselves. And, okay. uh, and uh, I was looking through for terrible photos of you. And, uh, oh, you didn't find any? No. <laughs> no, I found So it. have a good one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I found this one. This is like the first one I found. I didn't go digging that deep, but uh, oh, man. I thought this is a pretty cool photo of you. And I was thinking, uh, we were, <laughs> oh, look at that. I think we were at a restaurant. We got number 69, and you went down there, you put your tongue out like you're giving yeah. 69. Yeah. 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 So uh, I know you have a book about Radiohead coming out. I was thinking maybe that could be your uh, about the author photo. Oh yeah, we were, we're on the cover. Uh, I feel like that sells itself. They're like, oh yeah, this guy, he's a cut up. Creep. Wanted... Radiohead yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, what, what are your books? Where can people get them? How can people find out more? Follow you and your music criticism. Yeah. So I'm. Uh, you can find my books anywhere. Uh, anywhere online. Uh, any, wherever you like to, wherever you like to shop, they're in hardcover, paperback, and Kindle. Uh, I also write for the site Uprox. You can find my column there, and I'm on Twitter at Stephen underscore Hayden. Oh, and your new podcast is great too. Uh, oh yeah. yes, Rivals. Yes, Rivals. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a pod, yeah, it's a podcast about music rivalries. So everything from uh, we talked about Roger Waters and David Gilmore from Pink Floyd this week. To, you know, we've talked about uh, there was Smashing Pumpkins at Pavement recently. We're going to be talking about the Gallagher brothers pretty soon. That'll I be can't really wait fun for that episode. one. Yeah, no, I know it's going to be yeah. a good one. That's going to be and, and then Otis versus Super Duper Pooper. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> that's right. All those famous rivalries. <laughs> I might have to recuse myself from that since I'm now personally involved <laughs> in that rivalry. Yeah. We'll have, to, yeah. Let's, we'll have to have a guest talk about Otis and Super Duper Pooper. Well, come back on. We're going to do another tournament at some point, and we could use your expertise. So uh, well, th that, it was huge, Steve. Thank you. That was huge. Well, yeah. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Thanks for having me on. It was a pleasure. All right, Stephen awesome. Hyden, everybody, because we couldn't get anybody else. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we got Steve. him, though. I feel hey, like I'm we, still I here. Feel... Oh. <laughs> oh, you weren't supposed <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, did, did, uh, did you click him off? Is he still there? Yeah, he's okay. on. Okay. <laughs> he's gonna see this anyway. I, I know. I know. Uh, but I'm glad. I'm glad that. I mean, you know, we tried for some other people. But I'm glad that we got him because those people yeah. never made the right decision. I yeah, know a lot they're of, musicians. They're not critics. Exactly. Are to. That's what this is. This is this is the this is the critics' choice, right? Um, Hard right. to argue with that logic. So what a tournament. <laughs> We'll take a two-week break. We'll regroup. We'll see what, what uh, is in store for us after that. Uh, Nick, what do you want? You want to tell the story, or do we want to go out there on that, on that note there? Um, yeah, why don't you cue One Shining Moment, and I'll tell the story. Okay. I think that's it, right, for the, today? Um, yeah. On, excuse me. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell that story quickly, because it's been on, in the, uh, on deck for like three weeks. Yeah. So uh, here's a story quickly. Joe and I were on tour in Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama, and we found this used to be a Circuit City thrift store. <laughs> Not even hiding it. Um, and uh, it's called Love Lady Thrift. It's just a gigantic thrift store. We found this really crappy Xer bike, and uh, I took a really crappy picture of it. Uh, let's see if this is. There's the intentionally, I kind of moved the camera as I was, or my phone as I was taking this, so it was intentionally blurry. I mean, look, this thing, like, as if anybody would pay any money for this, let alone what they were charging. It's charged. garbage. It's garbage. garbage. Yeah. yeah. So I think we both were, had a hypothetical about what if Steve was my roommate at the time, and it was, what if we sent this to Steve and, like, really tried to convince him, like, would you want to go in with, on, on this with me for the apartment? Yeah. So I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Steve is at my apartment, in our apartment in Queens. And I said, any, any interest in going have these on this? And Steve replies, how much? And I said, 60 bucks, which is way, already way too much. And how am I going to get back? We're flying back to Alabama. They should pay you $60 yes. to, to take it off their hands. 
So yeah. Steve says, sure. Now, what are you thinking at this Great point? Great roommate. Steve? That's a good roommate. He's being nice. Well, Nick never asks for anything. Like, he, you know, it was his place. I had, you know, um, moved from L.A. to work on a job. Um, and so he was letting me stay um, in his spare room. Um, you know, and never just asked for anything. It was just a great roommate. I was the more messy one, everything like that. So I'm like, you know what? And I could use some exercise. So not like, a ton of room in the apartment, though. But, yeah. you know, I guess. And it's 30 bucks, you know? Like, that's not going to break you. That's it. Well, exactly. Yeah. I was like, 30 bucks if he, if it's what so, he wants. So we're both in tears here. Joe's like, turn the screw. You know, he senses, <laughs> he senses we got a mark. So I said, cool. At a thrift store in Birmingham. So I'm going to have to UPS ship it tomorrow too good of a deal not to pass up. They're like $1,200 new. <laughs> and then I said, gah, found an open UPS and drove the extra bike to it. And they're saying 290 to ship to New York. Thoughts? Need a quick response because they close in 25 minutes. <laughs> Instead of Steve being, I'm saying I'm out, he goes, how much total? <laughs> Once again, I wanted to make sure Nick got what he wanted. I didn't want to say no uh, so Joe, outright, but I, yeah. had to, I had to look to see how much I was willing to spend. <laughs> We're both broke at this point. No one's making any money. No, no. Joe's in tears. Oh, I'm I'm in tears right now. <laughs> I've not thought it, about this in quite some time. It's hook, line, and sinker. So then I said, I already spent 60 on the extra bike, so 350 total. Still a good deal, but more than I thought. Yeesh. And then Steve puts his foot down. I think I'd only be in for 125 Way too generous. So, but uh, supposedly though, Nick, you're at the UPS right now. Yes. With the Exer bike. Yes. Wrapped yeah, but, up and all boxed up and ready to go. In the rental car, yeah. So he's picturing those at home on like probably, I don't know, Saturday I think afternoon. I, I was going to say, I thought I was at work, but I guess it's 8, 19 p.m. I don't know. Oh yeah, uh, 8, 19 p.m. That's weird. Or that's when you took the screenshot, I guess. So probably it wasn't. That's when it happened. I want to say I was at work. I was trying to do something else. I'm trying desperately to, to be there. He's told me this is important, but I'm also like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, you know what? I think it was 8.19 p.m. because that's why I was saying UPS is about to close. Oh, maybe. No, I think we... that's when he took the screen grab at the end of the night. He screen grabbed them all. Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, I remember being in our, we had these little, like little uh, silver stream trailers we stayed in at the venue. Yeah. <laughs> Then bit, bit the bullet and shipped it off. The good news is it was cheaper than I thought, 330 total. <laughs> Bad news is they can't do home delivery for something that big. Goes into their distro center in Maspeth, is, is Maspeth. Because Maspeth is in this like industrial wasteland in Queens that you have to drive to. Yeah. Any you could pick up Monday? Joe said you could borrow his car. <laughs> Thanks, dude. So Joe lives about a half hour away in Brooklyn from my apartment. So he would, Steve would have to, on Monday before work, take the subway down to Joe's place, get his key, his spare keys, drive to Massbeth, take home probably an extra bike from 1979. Yeah, and then Venmo you some money. Yes. And like somehow fit it in your car. Mm -hmm. And then this is where Steve finally said, I don't believe you. And but that was not a confident, I don't believe you. That right. was a, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, I don't, like he's asking all these things. I'm like, this doesn't sound right. Like I was starting to, but that's not a confident, I don't believe now, you. If Joe had sent you, I don't believe you. If Joe had sent you this, what would your reaction have been from Oh, I, yeah, it would have been much, much yeah. less. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's so. gotten me, he's gotten me even, Joe's gotten me on like, uh, you know, April Fool's Day, where it's just like, I, I wake up, <laughs> I used to wake up every uh, April 1st with a text from Joe, and then like half the time it would take me a minute to realize that they're always about Nick. Yeah. Nick's got an eye patch, so yeah, he yeah. lost his eye. Well, I always started off, did you hear about Nick? <laughs> <laughs> I got my first one this year. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's yeah, right. From you, and what's funny is because it, it was timely, you said <laughs> Nick is on... Nick is on the ship, the medical ship. But don't worry, it's not coronavirus related. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's always about some, how I'm emaciated from being vegan. I yeah, about not getting enough protein. Yep. Yeah, I actually had Steve, who was a guest here, got very mad at Joe because he was he reached out to me and said, "Hey, I can venue mow you some money if you need it," or I because I yeah. think Steve's I think Joe said I was in the hospital, and then Steve's like, "Oh yeah, ha ha ha, I guess I'm a." Yeah. I'm a good friend. Egg on my face. So you yeah, I, fight for yeah. I, 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 I was on. I was on April Fools, and I said, "Yes, Nick's in the hospital. He has um, 
I don't know. I think yeah, I think I said a testicular disease. Or I don't know. Or... I was, I was... Or something. <laughs> I, I was on those. And he's like, hey, if you need some money, I'd be willing to to send it to him. Then he texted you, and then Steve didn't talk to me for two weeks because of that. <laughs> like he was genuinely pissed at me for saying that you were. <laughs> Harmed. So my my point is when Joe sends these texts out, no one believes him. He's the boy who cried wolf. But uh, so that's why I was t- sort of fresh. I'm usually on the up and up with Steve, and so this is why he he was he believed it. And then finally, though, this even pushed him too far. So it's open till ten, so you can just head to Brooklyn after work, grab Joe's car, drive to Massabeth, sign for the extra bike, try to put it in the car, drive it to our place, walk it up the stairs, and find a place for it. Then return Joe's <laughs> car in Brooklyn, all for three hundred thirty dollars. <laughs> And finally, Steve said, I hate that I believe you. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll do. yeah I mean, it went, so it went on for a long time. We were in tears. And, uh, oh, I'm glad screen, you. But it's too good not to. Uh, I'm care. glad you screen grabbed those. So that yeah, you yeah. Always, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to go back. Now with this, you know, what is it? Uh, pain plus time equals comedy or whatever. <laughs> I feel yep. like now I can finally appreciate the joke. Um, hey, I want to play one last. I want to play a Father's Day video, uh, which I like to call Daddy's Day. Um, of Nick, a candid uh, conversation. I think this is surveillance footage, actually, of Nick on the phone with his dad. Uh, he, Nick calls his dad, Daddy. And I think Matt LaFleur had just gotten hired as the Packers' new coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nick took a phone call from his daddy, and here's how that conversation went. Hey, Daddy, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I saw it. I think it's a good... I think it's a good decision. I mean, it's a, he's got an offensive mind, and I think if Rodgers likes him, I think... Uh, what's that, Daddy? Yeah, no, I I mean, the defense is still a piece of work, but, you know. All right, Daddy, I got to go. All right, love you too. Bye. Yeah, that's some surveillance footage that I... Yeah, had, I guess the rental uh, car had a surveillance camera that I was unaware of. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, all right. Goes out to my daddy. So uh, <laughs> new new VCR party on Tuesday. I've got two videos. I am absolutely incredibly rad thrilled to show. EP mode. We're gonna watch how to get revenge with Linda Blair in its entirety. Yeah. Um, and uh, that you can get at patreoncom footage festival. Um, oh man, I'm exhausted. Me what too. an exhausting show and it's time to get emotional we got one shining moment uh from that ross from st louis put together wow yeah so ross did such a great job with this so thank you he made ross. one for whoever won yeah yeah yep so we so got he here's the spring run edition. yeah yeah so that's all that's it if we had been prepared we could have done better we'll be right back right after that everybody's a puppet when they're dead thank you for being here i'm nola roper and this is the best talk in town yeah Good one. Uh-oh. What happened to the audio? Do you not hear it? I yeah, hear, I hear it. it. Oh, hear do you? It. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. Do you guys hear it? All right. I'll have to edit that. You always did your best 
Try.